Chapter 27. Mike TV is sent by television. Mike TV was even more excited than Grandpa Joe at seeing a bar of chocolate being sent by television. But Mr Wonka, he shouted, can you send other things through the air in the same way? Breakfast cereal, for instance. Oh, my sainted aunt, cried Mr. Wonka. Don't mention that disgusting stuff in front of me. Do you know what breakfast cereal is made of? It's made of all those tiny little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharpeners. But could you send it by television if you wanted to, as you do chocolate? asked Mike TV. Of course I could. And what about people? asked Mike TV. Could you send a real life person from one place to another in the same way? A person? cried Mr Wonka. Are you off your rocker? But could it be done? Good heavens, child! I really don't know. I suppose it could. Yes, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have some very nasty results. But Mike TV was already off and running. The moment he heard Mr Wonka saying, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. He turned away and started running as fast as he could towards the other end of the room where the great camera was standing. Look at me, he shouted as he ran. I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television. No, 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 cried Mr Wonka. Mike! screamed Mrs. TV. Stop! Come back! You'll be turned into a million tiny pieces! But there was no stopping Mike TV now. The crazy boy rushed on, and when he reached the enormous camera, he jumped straight for the switch, scattering Oompa Loompas right and left as he went. See you later, alligator! he shouted, and he pulled down the switch, and as he did so, he leaped out into the full glare of the mighty lens. There was a blinding flash, then there was silence, Then Mrs. TV ran forward, but she stopped dead in the middle of the room, and she stood there. She stood staring at the place where her son had been, and her great red mouth opened wide and she screamed, He's gone! He's gone! Great heavens, he has gone! shouted Mr. TV. Mr. Wonka hurried forward and placed a hand gently on Mrs. TV's shoulder. We shall have to hope for the best, he said. We must pray that your little boy will come out unharmed and at the other end. Mike! screamed Mrs. TV, clasping her head in her hands. Where are you? I'll tell you where he is, said Mr. TV. He's whizzing around above our heads in a million tiny pieces. Don't talk about it, wailed Mrs. TV. We must watch the television set, said Mr. Wonka. He may come through at any moment. Mr. and Mrs. TV and Grandpa Joe and little Charlie and Mr. Wonka all gathered around the television and stared tensely at the screen. The screen was quite blank. He's taking a heck of a long time to come across said Mr. TV, wiping his brow. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mr. Wonka. I do hope 
that no part of him gets left behind. What on earth do you mean? asked Mr. TV sharply. I don't wish to alarm you, said Mr. Wonka, but it does sometimes happen that only about half the little pieces find their way back into the television set. It happened last week. I don't know why, but the result was that only half a bar of chocolate came through. Mrs. TV let out a scream of horror. You mean only a half of Mike is coming back to us? She cried. Let's hope it's the top half, said Mr. TV. Hold everything, said Mr. Wonka. Watch the screen. Something's happening. The screen had suddenly begun to flicker. Then some wavy lines appeared. Mr. Wonka adjusted one of the knobs and the wavy lines went away. And now, very slowly, the screen began to get brighter and brighter. Here he comes, yelled Mr. Wonka. Yes, that's him, all right. Is he all in one piece? cried Mrs. TV. I'm not sure, said Mr. Wonka. It's too early to tell. Faintly at first, but becoming clearer and clearer every second, the picture of Mike TV appeared on the screen. He was standing up and waving at the audience and grinning from ear to ear. But he's a midget, shouted Mr. TV. Mike, cried Mrs. TV, are you all right? Are there any bits of you missing? Isn't he going to get any bigger? Shouted Mr. TV. Talk to me, Mike, cried Mrs. TV. Say something. Tell me you're all right. A tiny little voice, no louder than the squeaking of a mouse, came out of the television set. Hi, Mum, it said. Hi, Pop. Look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Grab him, ordered Mr. Wonka. Quick. Mrs. TV shot out a hand and picked the tiny figure of Mike TV out of the screen. Hooray, cried Mr. Wonka. He's all in one piece. He is completely unharmed. You call that unharmed? snapped Mrs. TV, peering at the little speck of a boy who was now running to and fro across the palm of her hand, waving his pistols in the air. He was certainly not more than an inch tall. He shrunk, said Mr. TV. Of course he shrunk, said Mr. Wonka. What? Did you expect? This is terrible, wailed Mrs. TV. What are we going to do? And Mr. TV said, We can't send him back to school like this. He'll get trodden on. He'll get squashed. He won't be able to do anything, cried Mrs. TV. Oh, yes, I will squeaks the tiny voice of Mike TV. I'll still be able to watch television. Never again, shouted Mr. TV. I'm throwing the television set right out the window the moment we get home. I've had enough of television. When he heard this, Mike TV flew into a terrible tantrum. He started jumping up and down, on the palm of his mother's hand, screaming and yelling and trying to bite her fingers. I want to watch television, he squeaked. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. Here, give him to me, said Mr. TV, and he took the tiny boy 
and shoved him into the breast pocket of his jacket and stuffed the handkerchief on top. Squeals and yowls came from inside the pocket and the pocket shook as the furious little prisoner fought to get out. Oh, Mr Wonka, wailed Mrs TV. How can we make him grow? Well, said Mr Wonka, stroking his beard and gazing thoughtfully at the ceiling. I must say that a wee bit tricky, but small boys are extremely springy and elastic. They stretch like mad. So what we'll do, we'll put him in a special machine I have for testing the stretchiness of chewing gum. Maybe that will bring him back to what he was. Oh, thank you, said Mrs. TV. Don't mention it. Dear lady, how far do you think he'll stretch? asked Mr. TV. Maybe miles, said Mr. Wonka. Who knows? But he's going to be awfully thin. Everything gets thinner when you stretch it. You mean like chewing gum? asked Mr. TV. Exactly. How thin will he be? asked Mrs. TV anxiously. I haven't the foggiest idea, said Mr. Wonka. And it doesn't really matter anyway, because we'll soon fatten him up again, and we'll have to do is give him a triple overdose of my wonder super full super vitamin chocolate super vitamin chocolate contains huge amounts of vitamin a and vitamin b it also contains vitamin c vitamin d vitamin e vitamin f vitamin g vitamin i vitamin j Vitamin K, Vitamin L, Vitamin M, Vitamin N, Vitamin O, Vitamin P, Vitamin Q, Vitamin R, Vitamin T, Vitamin U, Vitamin V, Vitamin W, Vitamin X, Vitamin Y, and believe it or not, Vitamin Z, the only two vitamins it doesn't have in it are vitamin S, because it makes you sick, and vitamin H, because it makes you grow horns on the top of your head like a bull. But it does have in it a very small amount of the rarest and most magical vitamin of them all. Vitamin Wonka. And what will that do to him? asked Mr. TV anxiously. It'll make his toes grow out until they're as long as his fingers. Oh no, cried Mrs. TV. Don't be silly, said Mr. Wonka. It's most useful. He'll be able to play the piano with his feet. But, Mr. Wonka, no arguments, please, said Mr. Wonka. He turned away and clicked his fingers three times in the air. An Oompa Loompa appeared immediately and, stu and stood beside him. Follow these orders, said Mr. Wonka handing the Oompa Loompa a piece of paper on which he had written full instructions. And you'll find the boy in his father's pocket. Off you go. Goodbye, Mr. TV. Goodbye, Mrs. TV. And please don't look worried. 
They'll all come out in the wash. You know, every one of them. At the end of the room, the Oompa Loompas around the giant camera were already beating their tiny drums and beginning to jog up and down to the rhythm. There they go again, said Mr Wonka. I'm afraid you can't stop them singing. Little Charlie caught Grandpa Joe's hand and the two of them stood beside Mr Wonka in the middle of the long, bright room, listening to the Oompa Loompas and this is what they sang. The most important thing we've learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set or better still, don't just don't install the idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we've watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out. Last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they're hypnotised by it. Until they're absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the windowsill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop and think to wonder just exactly what this does to your beloved tot? It rots the senses in the head. It kills imagination dead. It clogs and clutters up the mind. It makes a child so dull and blind. He can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairy land. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. He cannot think, he only sees. All right, you'll cry, all right, you'll say. But if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain? Our darling children, please explain. We'll answer this by asking you, and what used the darling ones to do? How used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented? Have you forgotten? Don't you know? We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read. They'd read and read and read and read, and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott! Gadzooks, one half their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books galore, books cluttered up the nursery floor, and in the bedroom by the bed, more books were waiting to be read. Such wondrous fine fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens and whales, and treasure isles and distant shores where smugglers rowed with mag muffled oars and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships and elephants and cannibals crouching round the pot stirring away at something hot. It smells so good, what can it be? Good gracious, it's Penelope! The younger ones had Beatrix Potter with Mr. Toad the Dirty Rotter and Squirrel Nutkin Pigling Bland and Mrs. Tinky Winky and just how the camel got his hump and how the monkey lost his rump and Mr. Toad and bless my soul there's Mr. Rat and Mr. Mole Oh, books, what books they used to know those children living long ago. So please, oh please, we beg and pray, go throw your TV set away. And in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall Then fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirty looks, the screams and yells and bites and kicks, and children hitting you with sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, 
They'll now begin to feel the need of having something good to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They'll grow so keen, they'll wonder what they've never seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating, foul, unclean, repulsive television screen. And later and on every kid will love you more for what you did. P.S. Regarding my TV, we very much regret that we shall simply have to wait and see if we can get him back his height. But if we can't, it serves him right.